Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to the channel. My name is Brendan. I'm with Pioneer Media. And apart from showcasing some of our work, we're not going to be putting out videos to review certain pieces of gear. We want to do tips and tricks. We want to do benchmarks and comparisons. Today we're putting two powerhouses head to head in a video battle. You may have heard of them. The Canon R5C and the Sony A1. Two monsters. Two behemoths. Two Loch Nesses. Loch Nye. Loch Nye? Two Goliaths. Two Sultan of Swats. I understood that reference. I really wanted to do this video because there's not much out there comparing these two. And honestly, we need to know more. In 2021, the Sony A1 with a small form factor, 8K internally, unlimited record times, and then recently the Canon R5C with 8K raw internally, unlimited recording. Now it's very easy to look up the specs of each one of these to see what they have and to see what they don't have. So here we have a brief overview of specs between the R5C and the A1. Now the R5C does 8K internally and three flavors of raw, light, standard, and HQ. However, if you're recording in HQ raw, be aware that you're only gonna be able to record that in Super 35 mode. The A1 gives you 8K and an XAVC format and an H.265 compression rate and that's 420 color up to 30 frames per second. And you could do that in either 200 or 400 megabits per second. The R5C has a 45 megapixel sensor and that's not a back illuminated sensor. However, the A1 comes with a 50 megapixel sensor and that is a back illuminated sensor. The R5C gives you 16 plus stops of dynamic range as long as you're recording in C-Log or RAW. The A1 gives you 15 stops of dynamic range in log. The R5C does give you dual ISO. The A1, there is no dual ISO. However, you're good up to about 10,000 ISO. There is no IBIS in the R5C, but you do have IBIS in the A1. The R5C has a micro HDMI, and the A1 has a full-size HDMI, which is nice. The R5C does have dual card slots. One is a CF Express Type B. The other is an SD card slot. The A1 also has dual SD card slots, and they also double as CF Express Type A slots. Both cameras do 24-bit audio recording with the attachment, and there are no internal ND filters on either camera. I did an AK recording test just to see the longevity of each one of these. I tried to match up the qualities as close as possible. From the R5C, I shot 8K in a 422 color space, 10-bit HEVC, and I got 56 minutes and 2 seconds. On the A1, I shot 8K in 10-bit, of course, 420 color, and I got 1 hour, 24 minutes, and 40 seconds. When it comes to resolution with these guys, Sony takes the crown for its 8.6K, whereas the R5C, 8.2K. What about these guys in low light? That's where it gets interesting. The Sony one does not have dual ISO. Around 10,000 ISO, that's where the picture starts to fall apart. On the R5C, the limit is 6400. Here at 6400, you can see the picture start to break down. Now the R5C does have dual ISO, depending on which mode you're in. If you're shooting in log or raw, your ISO is gonna be at 800 or 3200. And any of the wide dynamic range modes, you're at 400 and then 1600. And then any normal or standard settings, you'll be at 160 or 640. Now even though the R5C does have dual ISO and the Sony doesn't, when it comes to low light, Sony remains king. Even without dual ISO, that back illuminated sensor just allows it to do crazy stuff in low light. So understand the R5C is just a much more video rich system. It offers more features, more things you could do with it in video mode. It gives you false color. You can do shutter angle. You have anamorphic options. It even has a really nice flippy screen, which video people love. Whereas the Sony just doesn't have any of that. The A1 was never meant to be a cinema camera. Its whole purpose was to be the hybrid camera and to exceed whatever the standard is for photo and video. And it's done that. Both of these guys are amazing for video. But now what about its usability? That's really the whole purpose of this video. How easy is it to use in real life? At first glance, you could obviously see the size difference between the R5C and the A1. R5C sits at 1.7 pounds and the A1 at 1.6. The R5C is not as heavy as it looks or even as I thought. Honestly, where you're gonna feel a difference 
is when putting on lenses. RF lenses are just beefier and heavier than Sony lenses. When it comes down to it, the R5C is not the greatest run and gun camera. How so? Well, to do something on the R5C, you're gonna to have to take more steps and press more buttons to get it to do what you want it to do. For example, if you decide you don't wanna use shutter angle, you wanna do shutter speed, well, on the Canon, you have to program a button to activate your shutter speed, then you have to adjust it, and then you have to set it. On the Sony, you could just assign your shutter speed to that top dial, and then that's it. Even Panasonic allows you to assign the shutter speed to a dial. Not sure why Canon won't let you. Let's be clear, on the R5C in photo mode, you can assign your shutter speed to that top dial. However, when you switch it to video mode, it's a different menu system, it's a different system altogether. And in video mode, you can't assign your shutter speed to that dial, or any dial for that matter. It's pretty weird, right? Another example is if you want to assign your center size to a custom button. For example, sometimes when I'm on the Sony and I want that extra punch, I just want to be a little bit tighter, I assign Super 35 to a button. I simply press it and that's it. However, on the R5C, you could assign the sensor size to a quick button, but once you hit that button, you still have to select what area you want and then back out. So it's not as instant as it is on other platforms. In Canon, you have to take a couple extra steps, push a couple extra buttons to get what you want. Even something as simple as when you're in a menu and you want to exit out, what are we used to doing? Just hitting that shutter down halfway. However, on the R5C, you hit the shutter down halfway, nothing happens. You literally have to back out using the cancel or the menu button. Another area where Canon falls short is in its battery life. It's been using the same LPE6 batteries for how long now? It just cannot compete with Sony's batteries. So you're gonna get much longer record times on your Sony camera than you will your Canon. Interesting note about the R5C. If you're gonna be shooting 8K at higher than 30 frames per second, you're gonna to have to power it externally because without it, you lose power over your lenses, which means you cannot control your aperture. You don't have autofocus. So keep a dummy battery in there, use a PD rated power bank, and then you'll have full control over those features. So in conclusion, which one of these guys is better for video? Well, the R5C is a better video camera just all around. Better quality, better color. However, when it comes to usability, the A1 wins out. Just being able to be more run and gun, more controls right at your fingertips, just more customizable. Whereas the R5C, you need to hit a couple more buttons, take a couple more steps to get what you want. But another good question is how run and gun do you need to be? Is your muscle memory built fast enough to where you could change your settings and take those extra steps and do it quickly enough? Just make sure you have extra batteries on hand because you're gonna need them. With the A1, it's a little bit easier to use and you're gonna get better low light performance as well as better battery life. So if record times are important to you, this might be the way to go. Both of these systems are great for video. However, which one am I reaching for? Depends on the job. If I'm shooting a wedding, I'm reaching for the A1. I just don't wanna be bothered with changing the battery every 60 to 70 minutes, plus the added weight. I mean, we're shooting most weddings in 4K anyway. But even the occasional wedding, if we're shooting 8K, I still might go for the A1 just for the battery life alone. However, if we're shooting a commercial, I'm reaching for the R5C. I want the best picture quality. I got the time to set up my shot, to light it correctly. I got time. But if I need to be quick, like on a wedding day, I'm reaching for the A1. But which one do you plan on using? Would you reach for the R5C or would you reach for the A1? We want to hear from you and why. So please put comments down below. Let us know what you would do. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. We're gonna be doing more videos like this, reviews, comparisons in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, but we'll see you next time.